Hello, I'm Kristen from Kristen Kane Style. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. I am a style and mindset coach and I help you go from stuck and overwhelmed with your wardrobe to a place where you love everything in your closet and you can't wait to get dressed. There is usually a lot of stuff in the way and often that stuff is physical clutter and often that stuff is mental, mindset, drama that we have lived with over the years that is an obstacle to us getting dressed and to us building a wardrobe that we love and um, defining what our style or ideal style would be. And so when I work one-on-one -on -one with clients, that is what we work on together. I help you get clear on those limiting beliefs that are holding you back, that are keeping you stuck, that are preventing you from showing up as your most authentic, fabulous self. And I help you understand the fundamentals of style and learn how to build a wardrobe that supports the life that you live and is filled with pieces that you actually can't wait to wear. So often I think we, we create these wardrobes that are filled with amazing pieces, lots of amazing pieces, too many amazing pieces in many cases, and yet they aren't really pieces that we wanna wear. They don't support the life that we actually live. So much of our clothing goes unworn. And if we can get clear on who we wanna be, how we wanna show up, what is really in the way of that, and you begin to build a wardrobe from that space, it just gets so much easier and it is so much more fun to get dressed and to be able to show up and look and feel authentic and fabulous in your clothing. Um, wardrobes are designed to be fabulous and functional, not overwhelming and complicated. And I believe that our wardrobes affect our well-being. And so the faster we can get the clothing piece um, resolved and really uh, dialed in, the faster we can just get dressed and look and feel fabulous and get on with our lives. So if you would like information about working with me one-on-one, -on -one, style therapy is the way that I do that. There is a link down below to my calendar. You can set up a free consult call. We will chat for about 30 minutes and I will ask some questions and you will give me some clarity on what's going on with your wardrobe and we'll see if I can help. Chances are I can. I've been doing this a really long time and it is what I love most in the world. Today I wanna to talk about how to know what to add to your wardrobe when the season changes. We are in the you know transition into fall here in the Northern Hemisphere, and this applies whether you're transitioning into spring where you live. Uh, fall tends to be a season that my clients love to get dressed for. It, you know, is a welcome change after a hot summer. And so the idea of being able to layer and, and wear pieces that have a little bit more fabric to them and are a little more interesting than just, you know, the clothing reserved for hot summer that usually inspires women to kind of get into their closet and figure their stuff out and to shop. And I am not a proponent of a huge amount of shopping as the season changes or really any time. And if you're going to do a lot of shopping, I certainly believe in thrifting because I think it's better for the planet. And I think it allows us to really get more creative and more clever and more in tune with who we are and how we want to show up. And so I always suggest thrifting in conjunction with regular full retail if you, know, you have a thrift shop where you can um, do a little bit of shopping because I just think that it gives you a lot more options and it's more creative and more fun. Um, but I'm gonna talk about how to decide what to bring into your wardrobe as the season changes. It can be really overwhelming when the season begins to change, even months before the season changes, the stores, you know, when I worked in retail by July, we were starting to get merchandise for fall, lots of which couldn't actually be worn until easily October or November. And yet here it is on the floor, on the shelf, in you know July ready to be purchased. And it feels a little ridiculous. And I recognize that that is how the cycle of retail clothing goes. And so, you know, I'm pretty used to it. I worked retail for a very long time. And yet it creates this kind of frenzy and this uh, really artificial sense of urgency that you must buy it because it will sell out or you must buy it because this is the thing you need in your you know next season wardrobe. And I just really don't believe that's the case. And I also understand that with the change of season, there are often things that we want to add or need to add. And when we go into a store and it just feels super overwhelming because there's so much merchandise and, and where we just maybe are made to feel intentionally by the retailers and the manufacturers and the stores, we are maybe made to feel that we just don't possibly have anything that would work for this season because everything we're seeing is a different colorway or a different silhouette or you know different shape, whatever. Um, and that's just not true. So I think it's important to remember that pretty much anything we desire, we desire it because of how we think it's going to make us feel to have it. 
So it's the same when we shop for clothing. When we shop, and Anthropology is a lifestyle brand like no other. So I love Anthropology. I'm still a firm believer in Anthropology, even though I don't work there anymore. And they are really good at conjuring a lifestyle vibe that makes a person want to buy or makes the average person want to buy. When I would walk in in the morning for a shift, before I even got to the back room to put away my bag, there would be things that I would see on that very short walk to the back room and I was sure I needed to have them. I was positive that they were going to in some way make my life better, which is actually not true. You know, that candle probably wasn't going to make me a better person or make my home look more fabulous or be cleaner or, you know, make me a better hostess or any of those things. The candles that I already had at home that I wasn't burning would be just as good. And yet the way that they were merchandised and, and the scent and the vessels that they were in would often make me, even though I really know better, would often make me think, oh, if I have that candle and I burn that candle, my entire season is going to be even better. And so pay attention when you go into an, a retailer and you're a little bit overwhelmed and you're considering new pieces or you're feeling frustrated with your wardrobe, the new things that you wanna add, you want to add them likely because of the feeling you think they are going to um, produce once they're back in your closet. You are somehow going to feel different about yourself and about your life, about your wardrobe, about your style, once you obtain that piece. And so the retailer counts on that. They keep putting out new things because they know that you are going to keep chasing that idea of I'll be a better person if I have that silhouette of blazer, even though I have five other blazers hanging in my wardrobe, if I have this new one, you know, my whole season is gonna be made. So just pay attention to that. When we shop, we are usually buying the feeling. What we want is the feeling that we think that item is gonna get us. And so if it's a cozy sweater, for me, I fall prey to this regularly. The, the pale colored creams and grays, the cozy cashmere sweaters always make me feel like I'm going to be transported into Cameron Diaz's character's life in The Holiday, the movie The Holiday, and I'm going to be sipping my coffee and living in a cozy cottage wearing this cashmere while it snows outside. And so I want that feeling, which is why that cashmere sweater is appealing to me. Even if I already have cashmere sweaters in my wardrobe, I feel like if I have another one, I'll have more of that feeling. So if we can pay attention to the fact that we can come up with that feeling without that sweater. Like the feelings are our, you know, what we think creates our feelings. So we can pick a different thought, not I need that sweater in order to have that feeling, but we can pick a thought that already makes us feel that good, whatever that is. And so I'm not gonna get deep into that, how to choose another thought. That is my jam and I do that work one-on-one -on -one with clients so that they can begin to kind of shift how they're thinking so that the clothing that they already have usually works to support the life, a lot of it usually works to support the life that they live, they just have thoughts that are getting in the way. So one-on-one -on -one is how we would kind of get into that with you. So I have kind of six things I'm gonna run through with regards to shopping for the coming season and sort of what I feel is important and, and what to pay attention to or kind of the steps or the tips that I would offer. And so the first one is to define that feeling. You know, like I just mentioned, you usually want to acquire something because of how you think it will make you feel once you have it. And so if you want something, you know, different in your wardrobe for the new season, what do you think that feeling is? You know, what is that feeling that you're going after? And then consider what is maybe already in your closet that would give you that feeling. Like what really would create that vibe in your world right now without having to purchase a new piece? That doesn't mean you're not going to shop for fall clothing, you're not going to buy anything new, but get clear on defining how do you wanna feel when you get dressed in this new season so that you're not just grabbing at things and, and grasping for new pieces that might get you there, but you can kind of define your, your look and your style and the feeling that you want and then begin to develop the, you know, the wardrobe or identify the pieces that you might need to buy in order to have that feeling. The next thing is to take inventory. And I sometimes fall prey of not doing this. And then I think, oh, another gray cardigan, how interesting, or another cream sweater. Although I will probably never stop buying cream sweaters because they are my jam. Take inventory, pull out the bin of fall clothing or spring clothing, wherever, whatever season you're headed into, pull out the bin and look at what do you already own? What isn't looking so great? You know, what t-shirts should actually be replaced? What um, sweaters did you maybe forget about? Or jeans did you maybe forget about? And you might've repurchased something very similar when you already have that in your wardrobe. So take inventory, understand what's missing, what you already have that will work for the feeling and the vibe that you're going for for the next season. And then do a, a 
sort of a surface brief trend sweep. I wouldn't spend a ton of time identifying and getting clear and really understanding what the coming season's trends are. And I would spend a little bit of time, whether you buy a Vogue magazine, whether you go on Pinterest, whether you follow you know, influencers on Instagram, get an idea of what is coming for fall because it could be very possible that what you already own would work with the coming trends. I love blazers and so there are seasons when blazers are really on trend and I don't really need to buy another blazer because I have plenty of blazers. So if I do that inventory and I kind of really get clear on what I already own and what the trends are, I can see what matches up and I can see what I can use that I already have. If wide leg jeans are on trend and you already have a couple pair because they're still on trend, and you know you don't need to buy new wide leg jeans. But if all of a sudden there's a trend that is interesting to you, whether it's a color, whether it's a silhouette, whether it's a detail that keeps popping up on things as you're looking, you're doing your kind of trend analysis, then maybe that's a piece you would look for. You know, you don't wanna spend a lot of money and a lot of time on trends because they come and go quickly. And you don't wanna jump on the first trend when a season is changing, because oftentimes that one might be just at the periphery and not really stick around. And the trends that are going to settle and be a little more telling for that season haven't been released yet. But pay attention to that. And if you wanna bring in something, you know, that feels a little bit fresh and modern and trendy, just do it sparingly. The next would be the foundation pieces and my clients sometimes kind of look a little sad and maybe even roll their eyes at the idea of spending their time and energy shopping for the new season and shopping for the basics or the staples or the core pieces in their wardrobe and yet those are the workhorses they are really really important to putting an outfit together easily and and having it be effortless to get dressed and look amazing and so no they're not flashy or necessarily fun to shop for and they are really important. So pay attention to those foundation pieces, replace what needs to be replaced. If something doesn't fit any longer or you know isn't serving you or is worn out or needs repair or needs altering, handle that. And if you need to replace t-shirts or jeans or underwear or basic sweaters or basic jackets, make sure you allow for that in your shopping for the new season so that you're not left with all kind of the flashy, new, trendy pieces and you now have none of the basics that you really need to make an outfit with those pieces. And the last two things I would mention are, you know, similar and different. And one is find a practical piece, add a practical piece that is going to be a workhorse that may or may not be super basic. It might not be one of those things that you would consider a core item or a staple, but it's something that you really want to try in the coming season. It could be a new bag silhouette that isn't specifically trendy, but it is a piece that you know you will use a lot in, in the practical sense. It could be a great pair of jeans in a new silhouette. Add something that is practical and is a workhorse and is something that you are going to be able to return to week after week, wear it multiple times um, and possibly season after season so that you're not getting too distracted by the trends and what is really current you know, and, and in the moment you are investing in at least one piece that is kind of that practical piece that's going to take you for the long haul. And then add one fun piece. Add one piece, whether it is truly way trendy, whether it is just something that you other seasons have thought, if I had a really fun shoe or necklace or bag or scarf or jacket, you know, whatever the thing is, if, if I had that, it would make getting dressed more fun and it would make it easier and it would feel really authentic and it would flesh out my wardrobe. And so, pay attention to that and, and decide what that fun piece is going to be. Now your budget might allow that you can buy lots of fun pieces and lots of practical pieces and you know refill all of your foundation pieces and you know do all of that. Most of us, we have to pick and choose what we bring in in a season. And so if we can be discerning and make sure we have the basics covered and then make sure if we're buying one new piece, it's a workhorse. It's a piece that we are really going to rely on. It's practical in the sense that it is well-made and it is something that we're going to wear on repeat over and over again throughout the coming season and also other seasons after that. And then add something fun because, you know, certainly shopping for the next season is fun because it's new and it's different and the colors are different and the silhouettes are often different and there's, you know, we're inspired and there's um, just something cool about having that one new piece that will kind of liven up and freshen up the rest of your wardrobe. So I do believe in you know, making sure that you bring in something new that feels current and fresh and modern for the coming season. So I hope that that helps. I uh, am 
really trying to take my own advice and make sure that I go through what I already own before I buy new things. Sometimes when I'm thrifting and I see something, I grab it even if I haven't looked at what's in the bin. I now know that cream sweaters, as I've said, are something I'm always going to buy and I'm always going to continue to add to that collection. So if I see them, that's something I kind of give myself the green light and I figure you know I can buy them and when I'm thrifting them, they're always at a great price. Uh, lately, I've been buying lots of Levi's. Uh, I am going to have quite a Levi collection this year, which is interesting because it's been a lot of years since I've had Levi's, and now I have many, many pairs that I have thrifted recently, uh, and I'm loving them. So that's been kind of fun too. So whatever that looks like for you, uh, define, you know, decide what it's going to look like, you know, what feeling you're after, what your look is going to be for the season, take the inventory, you know, Pay attention to the trends, but not so much that it derails you and that that's all you're focused on for the fall because that doesn't make a fabulous functional wardrobe. Uh, and then, you know, pay attention to those foundation pieces, add something that is a, a functional basic um, or, or a piece that's a workhorse that's practical, and then add something fun. Bring something in that has some whimsy or some um, is really stylized or a color that you don't usually wear that will you know, make you feel like you have modernized the rest of your wardrobe for the coming season. I hope that is helpful. If you are not following me already on Instagram, why not? I do a live style Q&A every Tuesday at noon mountain time. And I take your questions and then I answer them and then the replay gets saved and posted there in my feed. And in the caption, I write down all the questions that I answer for that day. I have been doing this for, I don't know, about 10 months, nine months maybe. So there are lots of amazing questions and the beauty with the replay is you can just fast forward with your finger, slide it along the, the little slider and you know, kind of skip question to question you know, for whatever pertains to you, whatever you're wondering. If you would like to ask a question, you can DM me over on Instagram at Kristen Kane Style or you can drop it in the comment box below here and then I will answer it the next Tuesday. If you'd like more information on style therapy, I would love to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. You can click the link down below and it will take you to the calendar to schedule your consult call and then we can get started and I can give you kind of the next steps and what it all looks like and what the process is and um, what the results are that you should expect after that. Uh, that's it. I hope you have a really beautiful week. If you have any comments on whether you've done any shopping for the coming season, what you think you're going to bring in, what usually happens when the season changes, are you someone who waits till the very end and then you kind of have missed the season and you think, oh, I wish I had gotten that earlier. I have done that. Uh, are you someone who shops really early and then realizes once it's actually the right temperature to wear those clothes, you kind of don't even know if you love them anymore? I have done that also. Uh, I'd love to know, you know your thoughts and, and what happens. Please know I read every single one of your comments and the, um, sometimes my life gets ahead of me and it takes me a little while to reply, but I always try to reply to every one of your comments here. Uh, I really love reading them and I really appreciate this community and, and how we all kind of share our information and, and I love hearing your stories and, and what's happening with your wardrobe. So that's it for today. I hope you have a really beautiful week and I'll see you next Friday. Thanks so much for being here.